In this video, we will be talking about rational equations. Rational equations are equations having rational functions on either the left or the right side of the equation. The general form would be ax plus b all over cx plus d equals to e over f. In the previous video, we defined rational functions as functions written as quotient of functions n of x and d of x, where n of x is the function in the numerator and d of x is the function in the denominator. We emphasized that d of x here in the denominator should not be equal to zero. Otherwise, our function becomes undefined. The same principle applies to rational equations. In this representation, cx plus d and f should not be equal to zero. Otherwise, we will have an undefined expression. So we have here is an example of a rational equation. As you can see, rational functions appear on both the left side and right side of the equation. Now, when asked, when asked to find the value of x in a rational equation, a lot of ways can be done. But normally, the first goal or tactic is to simplify the equation and try to get rid of the denominator. We have techniques to do that. Examples would be multiplying both sides of the equation with the least common denominator or apply cross multiplication. So going back to our example, 5x minus 1 third equals to 1 over x. Uh, we can find the value of x by first rearranging the equation. We want to group terms with the same variables on one side. So we want to transfer 1 over x on the other side and 1 third on the other side. So our equation appears like this. Now, 5 over x minus 1 over x already have the same denominator. So combining these terms wouldn't be difficult. So we can do that and 5 over x minus 1 over x becomes 4 over x equals to 1 third. From here, we can apply cross multiplication. So cross multiplication, we multiply x by 1 and 3 by 4. So what we get, 4 times 3 equals 12, x times 1 equals x. So rearranging, we have 12 as the value of x. So our next example would be x minus 3 over x squared minus 25 plus 1 over x plus 5 equals 1 over x minus 5. This looks like a complex equation and we can just simply apply cross multiplication because as we can see, we have two rational functions added on the left side of the equation. So what we can do here is to try to get rid of the denominator by multiplying both sides with the least common denominator. And if we look closely, the least common denominator would be x squared minus 25. So if we try to, or if we multiply both sides with x squared minus 25, our equation will look like this. So let's, uh, let's distribute x squared minus 5 to the terms inside the parenthesis, and we get an expression like this. This side remains the same, and here, x squared minus 5 is distributed to both the rational functions inside the parenthesis. So from here, we just cancel what we can cancel. So the most obvious move would be canceling x squared minus 25 here, there. So we cancel that and we successfully got rid of the denominator in this expression. Now for these terms, we have to remember that x squared minus 25 is factorable to x plus 5 and x minus 5 by the difference of two squares. So x plus 5 here is actually a factor of x squared minus 25 and so we can cancel that and what we have left is x minus 5. 
The same goes with x minus 5. We can cancel that and what we have left is x plus 5. So after canceling the denominators, what we have left for the whole equation would be x minus 3 plus x minus 5 quantity x minus 5 equals to quantity x plus 5. So we remove the parenthesis. What we have would be 2x minus 8, 2x. That's combining x here plus x here. And negative 8, we get that by combining negative 3 and negative 5. And then the whole expression is equal to x plus 5. Now we try to combine the like terms and what we get would be x minus 13. And so the value of x would be 13. So there are actually other ways for you to find the value of x of the equations that we evaluated here. So for the first example, you could have started with multiplying the terms with the least common denominator. And for this example, you could have started with, say, combining like terms. So basically, you can do your own pace, you can do your own moves with trying to play with the equations, with expressions, and as long as you arrive with the correct answer, with of course, legitimate and valid mathematical moves, you'll be fine.